Good morning, folks. We've got two can't-miss articles today and a rundown of space weather. From previous days, you recall, we were awaiting CME impact and monitoring the sunspots. There is one more M-class solar flare from the northern departing group, but it has well turned out of Earth-facing position. The southern active region appears gearing up, but has yet to fire in any significant way. Folks, NOAA never updated their Emerald spiral from the X-class solar flare three days ago, and alas, the CME impacted as we expected overnight. Not a scary one, but it did produce minor geomagnetic storms, and if you were watching the northern lights, they did take a pretty good surge the last several hours. But that event is ending now, with minor reverberations, and we can see that the northern flare maker is departing, leaving more focus on the southern active region and its growing number of sunspots. This development can take several days, but it's how a complex sunspot group is born. We'll be monitoring this one, especially with several potential places for magnetic interaction at the opposing polarities. Leading into the science slowly here with one on geomagnetic effects on cell proliferation and production, with cosmic ray and secondary source modulation. But the more important heliobiology study today is one on hypomagnetic fields. In this one, mice were subjected to a reduced magnetic field and it caused significant cognitive declines, just like we're seeing on Earth right now with our field down 20 to 25 percent. And this is half of the scary psychological effects when the field fails to a greater degree on our planet, because the shielding from magnetic fields also shielded the mice from cosmic rays. That's the other half of the story. So while the magnetic weakening harmed the hippocampal and cognitive abilities, in this study, the lack of cosmic rays did not allow them to see the well-documented effects on the locus ceruleus, which is where the cognitive loss meets amplified fear, anxiety, and terror. Aren't you glad you live on Earth right now? Up next, we're diving inside the Earth for a look at Earth's rotation anomaly and a study that helps us understand it. First, trends continue. Earth's rotation speed is still speeding up. The days grow minusculely shorter as we are set to have our fastest year ever, and this summer should shatter the record fastest day yet again. Interestingly, this is not the first jump up in speed. That happened anomalously in 2002 to 2004, which is one year after the start and end, 2001 and 2003, of a decoupling and surge in core rotation speed. They checked the data from 1991 to 2017 and found that short window to be a decoupling period of differential rotation between the core and mantle. The core and mantle unlocked. The speed up in 2002 to 2004 recoupled them and stayed that way until the end of their 2017 data set. To see the modern rotational surge would require 2018 through now, and one can't help but guess that the core and mantle have actually decoupled for a second time. Don't worry, it's not that big of a problem until the mantle and crust unlock, which is still at least a few years away. Hopefully. Full details in our disaster book at otf.cells.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got the best five ultraviolet SDO wavelength shots of our star to close and what each is best for. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear, be safe everyone.